Hello YouTube. So this is going to be a really quick and dirty video. Um, I'm not going to bother setting up all my camera equipment etc. Um, because I am really excited. Uh, the other day I was browsing the internet and I was searching for a uh, live CD that I had back in the day from a magazine called PC Plus. Um, it was a magazine here in the UK that they basically had cover CDs on and um, loads of free software. Lots of it was a load of rubbish, but some of the bits were quite useful. It was a, a translation thing I think I used when I was at school, but it's where I first heard about the BOS. And if anybody who watches these videos knows, I absolutely love the BOS and I heard about it from PC Plus. So I was, like I said, I've been having a look on the internet, trying to find uh, these CDs or CD images, and somebody had posted an image of one of the CDs on archive.org so I downloaded it but it was a bit small it was only about 360 meg and I thought well if you're gonna have a whole live CD I mean BOS isn't big anyway but if you want the, if you're gonna have a live CD you're gonna need at least a six seven hundred meg um, image and yeah unfortunately when I downloaded it it was just the Windows partition if you like of the CD so that was a bit disappointing I then um, did a bit more searching and one of the websites that I download my CD images from is called Winworld PC. Now there's a forum on there that I haven't really bothered much about um, but I searched for BOS PC Plus uh, live CD and lo and behold there was a chap who'd bought a whole bunch of CDs for his collection and in it he was quite happy to make an image of any of this software or any of the CDs um, and put it on his Google Drive and share it that way. So I contacted him and said I was really, really keen on looking at the, the BOS CDs. Um, I wanted if he could make an image of them. So a couple of days later, um, he replied because the post was from like a year ago. So I didn't really expect much, to be honest. Anyway, he replied and he said, yep, I've made images, download them from my Google Drive. Now again, Knowing the way CDs work, um, the multiple tracks and sessions, if you like, on a CD, when I got the images downloaded, they were again only about 300 meg. So I contacted him and said, thanks ever so much. I don't think these are gonna work, however, because of the size of them. So I tried it in VMware Fusion on my Mac and unfortunately it didn't work. Um, and I said to him, I was really interested if I could buy them from him or uh, if, if he wouldn't mind lending them to me. And luckily, he said he wouldn't mind lending them to me. So they arrived in the post this morning, hence why I look like this, because I haven't, yeah, I haven't manscaped or anything yet. Um, basically, he sent me this CD here. Whoops, my thumb's covering it up. I uh, will be able to see it. But it says there, BOS. Try the full operating system from this CD. No installation required. And he also sent me the version 4.5, which I don't think I had, or I may have had, but um, he's also sent me that. So this morning, I've managed to make an image of the CDs. Um, I burned one to make sure, whoops, we're getting a bit dark there, that um, we can read the CDs. And my CD has decided it doesn't want to eject. Oh, there we go. So just a blank CD, I've made an image of the BOS4 live CD. I've written it to CD. Um, image burn, you can see both of the tracks. So I've got B Beige out and I'm gonna give it a try. The, just for reference, This CD is April 1999. This is the BOS 4 release. And this one here, this is the October 1999 release. So when I was, whatever 22 years ago is from 39. <laughs> 17, something like that. That's basically where I first heard about the BOS. Um, so, I've, I've, like I said, I've got B-Beige out, B-Beige is here. I've had a few problems because it's been in storage. Um, but yeah, I'm going to switch round. I'm going to be filming all this on my um, on my camera. I'm not going to bother trying to do any screen capturing because I'm just too excited about it. Um, I probably, well, I might try and do, if I can be bothered, 
um, a proper setup with all the cameras and stuff, but it's just, I, I just don't feel like doing it. It's a real pain at the moment. Um, anyway, enough rambling. I'm going to get back to the uh, back to the CD. So, <laughs> so apologies for the for the brightness of the video. It's uh, I've had to close the blinds because the sun was blinding me earlier over there. But uh, we've also got the bright monitor and the dark inside of B beige. There it is. <laughs> so I put the CD in and it's basically, I don't know how to tilt manually, but anyway, um, this is the live CD. So this is what we used to look, what software CDs used to look like. So this one was just a basic HTML page um, with some information on there. But what we're interested in is over here is the BOS 4 demo. And there's a nice picture of a B box there and the version 4 retail packaging. So what we need to do is we need to make a disk image, a boot floppy. Um, yeah, just some information about it. But it, click on here and it'll open up this folder. We have raw write and we have a boot image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the floppy disk in the drive. Now I don't think there's anything in this floppy, but we'll just check. Drive. Yep, the floppy disk is empty. Sorry, I'm trying to do two things at once. So, enter the source file name B O S boot dot I M G A drive insert disk. So, that's currently writing a boot floppy. Now this machine already does have BOS 5 on, it's dual boot with Windows 98, um, but if we put the floppy disk in we'll probably get the option uh, which, um, which partition or whatever we want to boot from. done. So, we now have, if we try and read it, Windows on Moan, because it doesn't understand the format. Yeah, so that's fine. What we're going to do is shut down, restart, and because we've got the floppy disk in the floppy disk drive, it should auto boot from the floppy disk first. Let's have a look. Is it going to boot from floppy? The BIOS. Oh, the floppy's flashing. Oh, and we got the B bootloader. Interestingly, it's just booting from the CD. It's not. Oh, yeah, here we are. Examining disks. Found boot volume. I wonder, nope the CD is flashing away so it is booting. I thought it might have found the partition on the hard drive. But it hasn't, let's do it. Oh, it's done an auto processing now. Here we are. Oh, I don't like the desk bar up there. I like it down the bottom. Welcome to the BOS Demo CD. The BOS is designed from the ground up to handle high bandwidth digital media, such as digital audio and video, in real time on low cost PCs. Colours look a bit off. Yeah. 
basically some information about where you can get it from. Anyway, so right, if we get rid of that. We go to about the BOS. So this will moan about the CD-ROM because it doesn't know, not the CD-ROM, the CPU, because this version of BOS um, was released much, much before the Pentium 3 that's in this machine. So this is an 866 megahertz Pentium 3. That's why it's saying unknown, but we've got the B logo. Let's just see if we can do something with the screen. 16 bits, let's do 32 bit. So again, this is all, ooh, that's gone a bit weird. Huh. Yeah, that's gone too, a bit weird. I'm gonna have to do a reset of the PC because we can't do anything with it. I'm just gonna pause the video here. I'm gonna get another floppy disk because this live CD has something really cool, has the option to make a preferences floppy disk which means all the settings that I make and all the preferences I change can be saved to floppy disk. So when you boot off the CD again in the future, um, you can put your floppy disk in and it will restore all of those preferences. So it's kind of like having a live CD with the ability to save stuff, not everything. And obviously floppy disk is, there's not much space on it. Um, but yeah, let me just go and grab another floppy. Right, so I'm back again, and as we can see, the system is booted, and the desk bar is at the top. Because obviously it's read-only, hasn't saved any preferences. Let's just eject the floppy disk. I think it was version 4 that allowed you to make a preferences disk, but it may have been version 4.5, but... Oh, no, create a floppy, there we are. Creating a floppy will allow you to save application settings such as network preferences, screen settings, and mouse preferences from the CD. Do you want to make the floppy disk? Yes, we do. So this is why I wanted these CDs because this, you can't do this in normal BOS for obvious reasons because it's a full install. I think this makes a boot floppy, so you don't have to keep swapping the floppies over, but we'll check in a second. You may be wondering why I got the side of the PC off. Uh, it's because I had a problem with the hard drive so I had to pull out the cable and put it back in again but we've got an error. Why have we got an error? Can we mount the floppy? Maybe that this floppy disk is dead. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't sound very healthy. Star chart, goodness, I remember all these. Basically, there was very little software on the... Uh, on the demo CD that you could <laughs> you could use. I used to play this game. This was called Flight, so play a game. Uh, view map. Yeah, that's not rendering for some reason. Oh, no it is, tell a lie. It's just basically a bit of a flight sim. I can't play it with one hand, so uh, basically there are on the map there's all these little black dots, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but they're enemies and you have to shoot them, just like that. But it just shows you the OpenGL performance. Uh, we go to Pulse, uh, Applications, Pulse. So, 
See the CPU is pretty pegged there. There's a bit of weird artifacting going on the screen there, but I'm not too worried about that. Uh, yeah, so um, this was where I learned about the BOS and actually got to try it on actual hardware. Now, there was always a problem with BOS and the, the hardware support, or the lack thereof. Um, and when I had a chat with Jean-Louis Gasset, I asked him about the hardware support and he basically said that they were told that when they moved over to Intel that they were going to have problems with drivers because there's just such a lot of different hardware out there they just couldn't possibly with the team that they had write drivers for everything uh, B logo yep and of course we have to do GL teapot so at the moment this is running at 800 by 600 in 16 bit color so it doesn't look particularly pretty um, I don't really want to play around with well let's give it a try it's a demo CD we can always boot back up off the CD again can't we let's do screen let's just try changing that or did, is that what I tried before no I tried changing that oh let's try it no. Right, another reboot. So I've left the floppy in this time. So we'll see what happens. Error loading OS. Press any key to reboot. Alright, let's... Let's uh, take that out. Do a restart. I wonder if we can boot straight from CD on this machine. Now I don't know what the... No, that's the BIOS, isn't it? Is it F12 or something? No. F8? I don't know. Oh! Oh, fiddlesticks. I can tell I don't play with this machine very much. Tappy CD ROM. So that's booting directly from CD instead of using the boot floppy. Which I probably could have done rather than making the boot floppy, but anyway. I've got my natural keyboard plugged in, PS2 natural keyboard, and I've got my generic compact PS2 mouse. I can't find my three button mouse, which is really annoying because that's where, the reason why I bought the three button mouse was because in BOS, the default preference pane for, oh, it's reading a floppy. The default preference pane for the um, mouse preferences has a three button mouse, a three button mouse. You can't actually do very much in the BOS, but the fact that it had three buttons, that's what I always wanted to try. So it is reading the floppy. So I wonder if it's reading those preferences off there. We'll find out momentarily. Yeah, so the hard drive um, is mounted vertically in here, and unfortunately, it didn't seem to be getting as much power as it needed from the Molex connection that was already plugged in. I don't know why, because it's always worked before. So um, I've had to undo my cable management and use one of the other uh, connectors on there. And luckily, plugged in the hard drive with the new power connector and it spun up and booted immediately. So I was pleased that my drive hadn't died. Yeah, I don't remember it taking this long to read the preferences. Perhaps the disk is... Oh, no, tell a lie. Oh, floppy's reading again. That looks atrocious.
Yeah, that's broken a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> so I think what we'll do is we'll eject the floppy. Yeah, let's let's shut the machine now. Shut down. Oh dear. It's not very happy at all. Right. Power that off. Put it floppy in. Like I said, this video is going to be really rough and ready. As you're experiencing it, as I am. So just quickly, let's have a look at the... Uh, Here we are, PC Plus, and it says, and BOS 4 bootable CD-ROM demo. And this was from, this is issue 150, April of 1999. So, PC has booted back up again, nice and quick, as the BOS is. So let's put the desk bar down there where we want it. Sorry, just trying to move the camera a bit. Uh, so we've got the boot floppy in. If we try and mount that, mount floppy. Doesn't recognize the format, that's fine. Let's do a create floppy. Create floppy, yes please. Inside a blank disc. That's not blank, but anyway. Do, 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 do. Oh, I don't know these people from today. They forget where, where. Uh, well, they've never experienced these kind of things. These noises and three D printed save icon. Oh. Yeah, these things that we used to have to put up with back in the day. The slowness of floppy disks. The CD-ROM keeps flicking away, so it's obviously reading something off the CD-ROM. Aha! It's finished! The BOS save settings floppy is ready for use. Cool. So hopefully if we move some stuff around. Oops, come here. Uh, let me. I don't really know what you can see what preferences you can save other than the desk bar. Oh, the create floppy icon is gone. Look at Pulse. Yep. GLT part still looks terrible. Can we do sounds? Yeah, they haven't put the, any sounds. Oh, no, they have. I've not got any speakers plugged in, so we won't be able to hear any sounds. But anyway, if we go back into the preferences for sound. I wonder if it has saved. No, it hasn't. <laughs> All right, let's do a restart. Let's see what happens. Let's see if the desk bar kill. Let's see if the desk bar stays at the bottom of the screen. Because I'm pretty sure it does. Now, BOS 4.5, which is this one, I haven't burned the CD of yet. Um, okay, that's not like that. 
Right, let's try the f let's try the boot from CD. So the CD RAM is in, the floppy is in, and it's reading the floppy now. So again, it's just a case of waiting. Now what was I going to say about BOS 4.5? Uh, this actually is the one that I have a CD of, and I've also got a CD of 4.0 uh, actually. And the disk bar still at the top there. Perhaps my floppy disk isn't working. It's not open styled did it to tell us about that this is a demo. Let's just try sticking that down there again. Alright, another reboot. It's not terribly slow, so I don't mind. writing something to the floppy. Right, let's try... CD-ROM... Again, it's reading the floppy. So the problem with these live CDs is there's not really that much software to play with um, other than giving you a, obviously a demo of the operating system and there's no productivity suite or anything so you can't um, create like Word documents. Oh there we are, the um, desk bar's down the bottom now so it has saved those preferences. So effectively, although we've booted from a read-only CD some of the things do get stored, so they are persistent through reboots. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but... Yeah, that's kind of cool. All right, let's restart. Let's eject the floppy. And let's try BOS 4.5. So I'm going to go and reboot into Windows, make the boot floppy, and then I'll see you on the other side. Right, so I just made the second floppy. I probably don't need to do this because I could boot from CD, but I like the fact that you can make floppy disks because I'm weird like that. So let's restart. Windows shut down. This should have a different boot screen. So if any of you have used BOS, you'll probably be more familiar with this boot screen. And also HiQ, HiQ OS looks uh, very similar or did the last time I looked at it
Mm, that's interesting. So this this is what the old BOS website used to look like. It's opened up net positive this time instead of a styled edit document. Yeah, I did used to like this website. Now, net positive, the default browser in BOS doesn't support JavaScript rollovers. These used to glow in the background. B logo is different. We've got to create settings floppy again. We do about BOS. Again, it still doesn't know what the CPU is, but we're running R4.5. Shows that I've got 512 megs of memory, the uptime. Um, and then if it's a PC or a power PC based machine. So let's again make this settings floppy. Yeah, so this looks a lot better, it doesn't open up like a, a terminal window. So as it's doing that, the specs of the machine, it's a Pentium 3 866 MHz. It's got a 8 meg ATI Rage something rather, ATI 3D, I don't know what it is. Um, it's got a Sound Blaster Live um, and it's got a 3Com something rather network card. And basically everything inside this machine is supported by the BOS, which is why I built it. Let's move the desk bar back up to there. And if we move it down there, it doesn't seem to be writing anything to the floppy, so that's interesting. But let's have a look in the menus. Well, oh, the create settings floppy is still there. Yeah, same number of applications. Pulse again. That looks the same. And you can do the whole press shift, click on the Title bar, move it, that kind of thing. Actually, excuse me. Yeah, you can still see the window decor as well. <laughs> so that's uh, making the floppy disk do something. Oops, sorry. So it's obviously saved that preference to the uh, to the settings floppy. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of preferences in there that it's saved. Right, what else have we got? Yeah, the same same basic things. Flights, GLT, pot, life. And then we got the preferences. So in terms of what you could actually do with this, this is still pretty limited. I mean, there's not very much in terms of applications. I mean, I haven't got a camera plugged in. Uh, we can have a look at the screen magnifier because if we want to, you know, oh, highly exciting. Mm. Uh, let's go with that. I quite liked star chart, I thought that was kind of cool. So I think that is actually going through the 3D hardware acceleration because the CPU isn't very pegged. Let's have a look at GLT pop. Yeah, that's kind of messing. Oops. We can't do two threads because we've only got one CPU. Uh, let's do comets. We kind of see. Little comets, probably can't see it on camera, but they're little comets kind of disappearing off in the distance. Alright, let's have a look at, I don't know, can we change the screen depth 
Well, it's 800 by 600. Yeah. Uh, let's try that. Oh, that's worked. Keep that one. Can we change the color depth? Let's try 16-bit color. Oh, we can. What about 32-bit? Cool. Right, my monitor's gone a bit weird. Mm, that's a bit unpleasant. Now, if I had an Ethernet cable plugged into the back of this, we'd be able to go on the internet. Yeah, loads of information there. Let's come out of that. What's in third party? Wow, there's loads in here. Personal Studio, real-time video editor. Oh, look at that. How 90s does that look? I have no idea what this is. Nope, no idea. I'm sure if I spent some time I could figure it out. ICQ. Well, that's not going to work. Drum circle. That's probably something to do with sound. Yeah, I haven't got any speakers plugged in so we can't play with that. Now go be productive. This is a office productivity suite. Now I had a demo of go be productive. Or oh, did I have it? Is it a demo? Is it? No, it's the full version, I think. Uh, so when I bought BOS 5, I think it was, it came with go be productive 1.1.2. And I think the version 2 did come out, but yeah. So here we could do, you know, hello YouTube, and we can make the fonts bigger, you know, the kind of normal word processing stuff. I don't know if you can insert pictures or what, insert frame, image, yeah, okay. <laughs> There's a, a nice buy button. This was always kind of funny. There was always these high cues every time that you uh, had an error message. A serious error. The site vanished into dust. Screen, mind, both are blank. Yeah. Let's do a graphic. Circle. Rectangle. Yeah, that kind of thing. Spreadsheet and presentation, you know, PowerPoint kind of thing. I never used it, so I don't really know what I'm doing. Uh, spreadsheet. Yeah, spreadsheet. One. Oh, one. Well, that's irritating. Oops, I'm sorry about the camera work here. I'm trying to watch the screen as well as do what I'm doing. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing really. And I've got GIMP. 
I wonder if that's for the drawing packages and it kind of just runs on top of the game. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Oh, samples. Business cards. How to make your own business cards. How exciting is that? Day planner. Ah. November 1998. That's kind of cool. Loan calculator. Slideshow. Yeah, typical kind of PowerPoint kind of thing. What's the, what's the widget? Oh, it looks like a newspaper. Only G Pan Sloan IA, that's um, Iowa, isn't it? Oh, this person was old. 1962 to 72, so they worked at Acme Super Saver for 10 years. Responsible for keeping all the produce and canned food aisles stocked and kept clean, Acme achieved record profits during this time, so I'm sure that was to do with his uh, canned food stacking skills. Anyway, so that was Gobi Productive. Moho. Okay, that looks like a some kind of animation. Lostmarble.com. I'm guessing that doesn't work anymore. Mail it. Mail it is a third-party email application. Yeah, it's moaning that it can't do that. Oops. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So basically, it's an uh, email. Pop three. Yep. Pop three email client. I don't think it does anything other than pop three. Oops. Well, I can't do anything with that window because it's all the way up there. That's slightly annoying. E picture, I think this was an image editor. Uh, new template. That's gonna moan, great. Uh, this is an um, animation package. I think you can make animated, um, now this is gonna annoy lots of people the way I pronounce it, animated GIFs or GIFs. Now we're in England, so we call it GIF here, so... Yeah, I don't know much about whatever that is. Um, what else we've got? Net Penguin. So that's an FTP client. I think I've used Net Penguin on my other BOS install. That might roll me up. Alright. Oh, okay. It's pinball. The graphics are quite good, actually. Now I'm going. I'm not going to be able to play this because I've got one hand holding the camera. So, but yeah, there's definitely a lot more software on the 4.5 CD. And let's do a restart. Now I'm going to restart. I bet this isn't going to boot from floppy. Yeah, we've got the error. That error. So let's try booting from CD. And 
hopefully it should read our preferences floppy and the desk bar will be down the bottom so this is a booting a lot quicker off the CD than it was off the floppy it's reading the floppy disk now sorry about the brightness here the sun's decided to come out reading lots from the floppy at the moment. It's kept the screen resolution. There we go. I think if you choose to shut down the machine it does actually save the preferences, whereas if you do a restart I don't think it saves everything, which is slightly weird, but anyway. So yeah, the uh, some of your settings are saved persistently through a reboot, even though we're running off a CD. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to shut the machine down, and I'm just going to show you how quickly it boots the BOS from the actual hard drive without booting from CD. Um, before I do that, actually, we can mount the file system for B Beige. So we go to Demos. So actually, there's not that many demos in there. If we go to here and go to Demos, see there's a load more. If we do a new folder, 4.5, oh, fiddlesticks. You can also mount Windows partitions as well. So there's me uh, Windows directory. Not the best picture, but that's a Windows 98 logo, so yeah. If we do a print screen...
Yeah, it's not saving the print screens, but anyway. Okay, so we'll um, shut the machine down. Saving the preferences to the floppy. I'm going to eject the floppy. Uh, we'll do. Uh, we'll eject the CD as well, actually. So you just get some kind of idea how fast the boot off CD is. And you don't have to make the preferences floppy, but so we've got at least five this time. Yeah, this version, I don't know if we'll be able to see that, but basically it says it's running a Pentium 3. If we open up Pulse. Yeah, so Pulse, Pulse recognises that this is a Pentium 3. So in version 5 of the BOS, which is this, this is running, this is running 5.0.3, that uh, came in version 5 and updated it to 5.0.3. So if we go to demos, no, well, that's weird. Oh, right there, all right. Flight. Uh, Mandel Brock. I love Mandelbrot, so I spend hours just looking. Anyway. Yeah, so... That is the BOS running off a live CD with the option to save preferences to a floppy that gets saved between reboots. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. I'm going to play with it a bit more off-camera. And... Uh, yeah, I'll see you soon.